Top 20 Prehistoric Fiction Novels of 2015 and 2016. Number 19, Sabretooth, Dawn of Mammals, Book 1, by Lou Cadle. Park Ranger Hannah Cates is leading a group of gifted teens on a fossil hunting field trip when a rock slide undercovers a portal through time. They are whisked back to an era when giant predator mammals roam the earth. They want, desperately, to find their way home. But first, they have to survive a world where bizarre and hungry mammals ruled North America. They have to survive the dawn of mammals. Cro-Magnon by Robert Stimson Cro-Magnon is an archaeological techno-thriller. Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child meet Jane All. Do you wish you could chuck your workaday life, travel to a mountain fastness, and engage in a mortal struggle? When Ian Calder burned out paleoanthropologist and Caitlin Blaine, brain-scanning geneticist, are dragooned by a ruthless industrialist to dive on a waterlocked cave in Tajikistan. They find not only permafrosted prehistoric bodies, but also wall drawings that recount the travails told in an interlocking story of an outcast Cro-Magnon woman and their half-Neanderthal baby. Meanwhile, the two conflicted scientists facing imminent death must escape into a frozen wilderness with a priceless burden. Against All Instinct by Joshua Buller Kanta is a member of a tribe of nomads who wander this dangerous world where the changing of the seasons heralds increasingly deadly creatures. Yet even in the most dire circumstances, his people are determined to find a way to forge onward and carve their own path. From the calm of early spring to the relentless cold of the inevitable winter, Conta's family and tribe are tested against dangerous enemies and hardships. Headstrong and determined, Conta sets to overcome the odds with a will of iron and grit, but nothing he achieves will be without sacrifice. Following in the footsteps of Jane M. All and William Saraban, Against All Instinct is a novel of prehistoric fiction for adults and young adults alike. Number 16, Sticks and Stones from East, A Passing of Ages Saga, Book 1, by Spencer Haynes. Prot and the other young men to be of the Haruba tribe are ready to make their journey through the prehistoric world around them. Their destination is the circle. There they can go through the rites to become men of value to the tribe. Prot, though, has begun to take notice of the change in his world something beyond the stories told around the campfires. Number 15, Captive of the Beastmen by Ember Frost. The old ones of Wren's tribe have long told stories of the Beastmen, terrible creatures that walk upright like men, but with the faces and souls of fearsome animals. But when her tribe must flee from their forest home, Wren discovers that the legends are not just stories told around the campfires to frighten children. The beast men are terrifyingly real, and they take Wren and her best friend captive. Will the hunters from her tribe rescue her, or will she remain a slave of the beast men forever? Heart of the Bison, Neanderthals Book 1 by Glenn Stott As the lambent light from the slumbering fire dances across the roof of the cave, a young girl wakes from a dream. Keck's dream tells her that her clan is in jeopardy, and Mother Earth expects her to do something to save her people. A magic child will be sent to help her. The Gorge by Joe Ziegler. The Gorge is a story of the triumph of will and perseverance by four young girls of prehistory. The people have walked the land since time began, migrating as the seasons changed. They do not plant crops like the lowlanders, nor do they pillage and plunder like the vicious raiders. Number 12, Prehistoric, a prehistoric thriller. A giant boardwalk has been resurrected high up in the Indonesian rainforest canopy, offering guests stunning, spectacular, and unparalleled views of the rainforest. However, the boardwalk is incomplete and in need of more funding. The creator, John Korstein, assembles a group of potential investors for a weekend tour of the boardwalk. Little do they know that high up in the rainforest canopy, they are being watched, but more importantly, they are not alone. Leader of the Hunt by Jeff Koval. 
Who decides who gets to spend pleasant days on sandy beaches, and who has to face the cave lions? Do the spirits decide? Is it fate? Is it chance? Or is it something else? Stargazy broke one of the most important rules of hunting. He walked away from his hunting partner. He left his partner alone on the grassland, and that's when the cave lions came. Stonebird died because of Stargazer's carelessness. Stonebird, his hunting partner, his friend, his brother. Number nine, The Village of Bones, Sabala's Tale, Earth Song Series by Mary Mackey. This is a prequel to the Earth Song Series. Mary Mackey's The Village of Bones gives us the vivid adventures of the Clan of the Cave Bear, the magic of the Mist of Avalon, and Lord of the Rings, and the beauty of Avatar. Filled with the belief that love drives out fear, it contains stunning twists that will leave you wanting more. Dorothy Hurst, author of The Wolf Chronicles. In 4386 BC, a young priestess named Sabala conceives a magical child with a mysterious stranger named Arash. Sabala names the child Mara. This child will save the goddess-worshipping people of Europe from nomad invaders called Eastman, but only if her mother can keep her alive long enough to grow up. Warned in a vision of the coming invasion, Sabala flees west with a rash to save her baby daughter, only to discover that she is running into the arms of her worst enemies. In the dark forest of northern Europe, other human-like species left over from the Ice Age still exist. Number 8. Yesterday's Dawn, Hunters of the Ice Age, Book 1, by Teresa Scott. At the dawn of time, a proud people battled for survival, at one with the harsh beauty of the land and its primal rhythms. The Mammoth Slayer. Named for the massive beast sacred to his people, Mammoth had proven his strength and courage time and again, but when it came to subduing one helpless female, he found himself at a distinct disadvantage. Never had he realized the power of beguiling green eyes, soft curves, and very red lips to weaken a man's resolve. He had claimed he would make the stone woman his captive, but he soon learned he would never enjoy her alluring body unless he could first win her elusive heart. Ember of a New World by Tom Watson Ember of the Great River People was a carefree young woman living in a small tribe in prehistoric Germany when a sign from the gods sends her on an epic quest to the ends of the world, where the sun sets. Armed with only her fishing spear, obsidian dagger, and a keen mind, she faces raiders, relentless hunters, human sacrifice, wolves, and a struggle against nature for her very life as she learns what it means to be a warrior and to truly live. Well-researched and highly descriptive, Ember of a New World is an inspiring coming-of-age story featuring a strong female protagonist and set in the early Neolithic period of prehistoric Europe, 7,500 years ago. Clothing, weapons, rituals, and daily life are described in detail as the reader is transported to wild tribal Europe. Big Game, a prehistoric thriller by Alex Laybourne. Matt Carmichael had always been a disappointment to his father, at least. Matt's refusal to hunt was just one of the excuses he used to abuse his family to the point of destruction. Twenty years later, Matt is reunited with his father and brother for a holiday of a lifetime. He knew something was wrong. He knew he shouldn't trust his father, but it had been twenty years, and people could change. Matt was wrong. Trapped in a land that time forgot, Matt is pulled back into the world he fought to escape and is forced to do the two things he had always refused. In order to survive, Matt must both forgive his family and join the hunt. As they journey deeper into the lost world, Matt learns the hideous truth about his father. The family's darkest secrets are brought to light. In a land of ancient beasts, man still remains the greatest predator of them all. Daughter of the Red Deer by Joan Wolfe this extraordinary stage set in prehistoric southern France is rich with the mystery and wonders of Paleolithic times. With stunning imagination, acclaimed author Joan Wolfe has recreated the ritual and adventure of a primeval world as she tells the timeless tale of conflict between two societies, two gods, two sexes, and two people. In the mist-shrouded 
mountains of the Pyrenees during the last great ice age, the magnificent epic of passion and intrigue begins when tainted spring water fatally poisons the women of the tribe of the horse. The clan's young men set forth on a raid to kidnap new women from the matriarchal tribe of the red deer, a quest that must succeed or the people will die out. They return triumphant, only to find their envious elders enraged by their success, for they had hoped that some would be killed, leaving wives for the older men. Thus the stage is set for a tense confrontation between generations. Golden-haired Mar, the leader of the young men, has fallen in love with the beautiful Aelin, daughter of the red deer priestess and chief, and chosen one of the mother goddess. Before he can claim his prize, he must overthrow his elder Atlan, the tribal chieftain, who is as brutish and powerful as the giant bison of the plains. As the bitter conflict unfolds in the Dordogne Valley, this mesmerizing novel brings to life an epoch lost in time, recreating compelling history as it might have been, portraying passionate men and women who move us with their dreams, never ceasing to remind us of the timeless longings of the human heart. The Seal Eaters 20,000 B.C., Book 5 of Winds of Change, a prehistoric fiction series on the peopling of the Americas. The Seal Eaters, 20,000 B.C., is the last of the planned books in the Winds of Change series on the peopling of the Americas. The time period is the onset of the last ice age, which ends the time of peace and ushers in the time of war on Earth. The time of war continues today. The novel is a survival story of the Salutrians in southern France, northern Spain, Due to advancing ice sheets, seals from the north have beached on their shores, and the seal eaters have come to depend on them for their major food source. The seal eaters face advancing ice from the north, warring groups beyond the mountains to the east and south. In search of a new land, a small number of seal eaters travel the arc formed by the ice sheets, eating seals along the way across the Atlantic Ocean to the east coast of what is now North America, a coast very different from what we know today. A Long Walk for Knowledge, a Prehistoric Novel, by James Wilmot. The following story takes place approximately 9,000 years ago, 7,000 BCE. In many ways, life for human beings on Earth was changing dramatically during this period of time. Due to the discovery of agriculture, animal domestication, basic medicine, water navigation, and other new technologies, some humans began moving away from living in small groups of hunters and gatherers to living in larger and larger groups that would grow much of their own food. It is during this critical time in the history of our species that a young boy, Una, was forced to flee his forest village in what is now central France. He began a 30-year quest which took him to many different lands lands where the technologies mentioned above were, in fact, emerging. During his long journey, Una devoured knowledge, yet he also shared his knowledge willingly with anyone who asked. Now, 9,000 years later, he willingly shares much of what he learned about human beings and life on Earth with you. Number 2. Horizon Alpha, Predators of Eden. Read Minich author of the Kenobi Trilogy, says, I've often dreamt of trying to survive on a new planet and fitting myself against nature. My dreams were never this chilling, nor the ending as thrilling. I highly recommend this high-energy adventure and would place it between Isaac Isimov and Arthur C. Clarke. Right, Reed Minich, author of the Kenobi Trilogy. There's plenty of jet fuel for the imagination, the pace is fast, the stakes are high, and the safety of no one is guaranteed. John Burris, author of Brothers. We never would have come here if we'd known. 200 years ago, the great Art Horizon Alpha escaped a doomed Earth and went searching for a new home. The passengers landed on two seti, e experiencing a paradise, but instead they discovered a planet struck in its own version of the Cretaceous period. The humans one defense against the dinosaurs ravaging the planet is an electric fence built from the remains of the shuttles that brought them there. But Eden Base has only days of power left. And number one, my most anticipated read of 2015 and 2016 is The Dinosaur Lords by Victor Milan. It's like a cross between Jurassic Park and Games of Thrones, says G.R.R. R. Martin. 
a world made by the eight creators on which to play out their games of passion and power. Paradise is a sprawling, diverse, often brutal place. Men and women live on paradise, as do dogs, cats, spirits, goats, and horses, but dinosaurs predominate. Wildlife, monsters, beasts of burden, and of war. Colossal plant eaters like Brachiosaurus, terrifying meat eaters like Allosaurus, and the most feared of all, Tyrannosaurus rex. Giant lizards swim warm seas. Birds, some with teeth, share the sky with flying reptiles that range in size from bat sized insectivores to majestic and deadly dragons. Thus, we are plunged into Victor Milan's splendidly weird world of the dinosaur lords, a place that for all purposes mirrors 14th century Europe with its dynastic rivalries, religious wars, and Byzantine politics, except the weapons of choice are dinosaurs where vast armies of dinosaur-mounted knights engage in battle. During the course of one of these epic battles, the enigmatic mercenary dinosaur lord Carol Bogomirsky is defeated through betrayal and left for dead. He wakes naked, wounded, partially amnesiac, and hunted, and embarks upon a journey that will shake his world. Now, I promised you 20 books for the list of prehistoric fiction novels for 2015 and 2016, and I'll get to the last one in a minute. But first, I just want to say that at least 12 of these 19 books that I've already mentioned are doing really well on the charts on Amazon. If you look up prehistoric fiction, you can find them all on the first four pages. They're getting great reviews and competing with fantasy, and science fiction books for sales on Amazon. But all but two of them are self-published or published by very small presses. And I think this is reflective of the fact that though prehistoric fiction is making a big comeback in light of recent news and all the new discoveries we found about our ancient past, agents and publishing houses haven't really caught on to it yet. How do we make them aware of our interest and make sure that more great books about our prehistoric past are written and published in the future? Well, buy one of these books that we've mentioned today. Subscribe to this channel where we'll be bringing you more prehistoric fiction news and commentary. And let the people in publishing that you know or in your social media circles that you want more prehistoric fiction. I haven't read any of these books yet. I'm still having to finish my backlog from 2014 and even earlier, but I do plan to read all of them. And I'm also really looking forward to Mary Mackey's tale. This melding of fantasy and prehistoric fiction and magical realism is something I explore in my own works. And that brings us to the 20th book that I promised. Though my full-length novel, The Oracle of Lost Sagas, set in our prehistoric past, won't be out until 2017, I've made an excerpt of it available absolutely free. It's the POV of one of the eight main characters who have POVs in the novel, and it stands alone as a complete novelette. The initiated one is a novice in an ancient band of hunter assassins who must travel into the highlands which were once ruled by his ancestors but which are now overrun by those of ogre kind there he must prove himself worthy of respect to those of his order and finally earn his name if you'd like to read the man from parco katoon bears favor click the link join our newsletter. We send you an update once a month talking about prehistoric fiction and prehistoric news, and you'll receive a free copy of the book, and you'll also receive other books in the future and discounts on the Oracle of Lost Sagas when it's available in 2017. Don't forget to like this video. If you've enjoyed the presentation, please subscribe. I'll be talking a lot more about prehistoric fiction and keeping you updated on all the new books that come out in this genre. Hope you have a great day, and thanks for stopping by.